Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be working on this Dufferin green leaf. Hey guys, what's up? It's Tony. I'm back in the paint room and uh, I haven't been around for a little while, but I'm still working on projects here and uh, I figured I would give you guys a little update on what I'm working on. So one of the things that I've been uh, wanting to do for a long time is this cue that's in the lathe uh, right here behind me. It's a Dufferin green leaf, kind of a real deal sneaky peat that you could buy from from Dufferin. Uh, probably came, I don't know, it was probably available back in the 90s or so, maybe the early 90s, maybe it was the late 80s. I'm not too familiar. If you if you know more about Dufferin green leafs uh, and want to make some comments, uh, make sure you put them, put them below. So here you can see my joint uh, that I have here. It's already, you can barely see the seam. So that's pretty good, but I did two white, uh, I did a white fiber ring and a black fiber ring and then Juma in the middle. So it's Juma on Juma um, and uh, wood, of course, in, in the middle. And then moving down, you can see this is the old finish. Uh, it's yellowed quite a bit. Uh, so we're gonna take that off. And then I uh, already started sanding here, got excited before I started to film, of course. And then here, which you can't see right now, but you'll see it eventually, is the green leaf uh, Dufferin. Uh, you can see it in there a little bit. So that's not faded. That's not uh, sun damage or anything. They made a few of these cues. I believe they were all 58 inch two piece cues. And I've heard some cases report that they were only sold in Canada, but a few of them made them down here, but they are pretty unusual. Uh, this is actually maybe one of three that I've seen in my whole life pretty unusual to see but uh, i'm gonna try to do my best at making this cue look good i thought the white with the black simple rings um is gonna do it justice but uh for now that's kind of what we're doing i got the whole cue in the lathe right now but let's turn it on we'll just see how basically straight this thing is which you'll see the cue the tip end over here got a little bit of a wobble but that could just be how i have it uh, mounted in the lathe right now uh, when I put it in end to end in between my centers, it's totally almost perfectly straight. So I think this cue is actually going to be a great player for someone once I'm once I'm done with it. All right, let's give you guys a little dust show here. Uh, first things first, this thing, crucial, got to have it. So my voice is going to get a little muffled here, but maybe I'll have to do a voiceover. We'll see. All right, we're strapped in. Now I'm using uh, 120 here just to take the finish off. So I wanted to take some time and tell you about how I got the pin out. I basically took a blowtorch and heated up the pin and was able to unscrew it from the shaft. In these cues, the shaft uh, housed the pin and then that screwed into the butt part of the of the cue. So I also went ahead and bored and plugged it with old vintage wood that I had cut from an old house cue as well. So uh, I'll tell you a little, little bit more about the process uh, as we go along. But for now, that's basically how I got to this point. But I wanted to uh, let you guys know how I put the pin in. All right, still a lot of finish on uh, right through here. You can see it if you're looking closely, but I think not much more. I'm gonna go this way. So one of the things that I like to do is in between changing grits of the sandpaper, I like to sand with the grain of the wood and uh, that gives me some cutting material uh, when I switch to the next finer grain, uh, makes a lot smoother. All right, now a little bit of uh, a reveal here. Uh, we'll see what it looks like. This is with uh, 120 grit sandpaper, sanded. I'm just gonna take my microfiber here and clean it off. All 
right, so I can still see there's quite a bit of finish uh, right here uh, and moving down. I got quite a bit of yellow uh, that's right here. If I can move my camera, you see this, how white that is, how yellow that is. Should all look like this all the way down. So we'll keep working on it. 220. Next step. So the sanding process always takes longer than I expect it to. Just changing between the grits and, uh, you know, double checking to make sure that you're not sanding too much. Normally what I'll do is I'll have an idea of what diameters I want the butt and the joint to be. And then I'll make sure that as I'm sanding, I'm measuring as I'm going. I didn't really film the digital calipers on this, this process because I kind of have an idea because my butt cap and my joint are already cut to a particular size. So I kind of know uh, where to go. All right. Funny story about uh, just my art career in general. I'll never forget this. Actually, I, I went into a Joann Fabrics a few years ago, maybe like 10 years ago, and I needed a pair of scissors that uh, I was going to be cutting uh, a lot of stencils out and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, I just needed scissors to cut things that, that were good. My mom always taught me to get Fiskars, not sponsored by Fiskars, but to get Fiskars scissors. And uh, so I went in and bought these scissors, and as I'm checking out, the lady at the checkout said, okay, whatever you do, don't ever cut paper with these scissors. Here they are. They're in my shop all the time. They live right there so that I can grab them easily. But here's how I spent the last year with these. This is uh, 220 grit sandpaper. Oh. Still sharp. I always laugh when I think about this lady uh, telling me not to cut scissors or not to cut paper. And then here I am cutting the most abrasive paper you can imagine. And they still hold up. So get yourself some Fiskars. All right, let's get back at it. So one of the things I'm looking for right here is when I'm sanding, you see this color, that's wood. This color is finish. Uh, whether it was epoxy or car paint, I don't know what they used on these cues, but I got to get rid of all this and the whole cue needs to be back down to the wood. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm sanding here. So I'm trying to get rid of the yellow spots that are still in the queue, which are an indication that there's finish there. See that? That's the difference. So you got to keep the paper moving if you're not going to use a very big piece like I'm doing here. I'm just using little trim pieces to uh, save some money, be a little frugal. But normally you would like to use a big giant piece of sandpaper to keep this as flat as possible. Now, I'll focus more on that using larger sheets once I apply the finish here, but uh, I really just wanna give the cue its basic shape and get it back down to the wood. That's my intention here. Uh, right now, I'm kind of rounding off the bottom edge of the bumper, and that's uh, gonna give it its shape. All right, let's check it out. hands. LeBron James. Blow this guy off. All right, so looking pretty good. You can start to see the Dufferin in there now, but this is going to be a nice cue. 
I still got uh, some finish right here. You can see how it's yellow. So I got to finish taking that off. It's got to be this color right here. Got my joint nice and smooth. That's looking good. So I think we're going to be in good shape. A little bit more sanding. There's always more sanding I feel like to do. All right, guys, let's get rid of some of this dust. One of the things that I've been doing is all the money that I've made with the pool stick repair so far, I kind of put it off to the side. And then I take that once I get enough and I've been reinvesting it back into the shop. So I've been buying uh, tools uh, secondhand. And a good way to do that is looking around at auctions around your area. And I found this shop vac and uh, a drill press around uh, about 40 minutes away from here and was able to pick it up for uh, about 110 bucks. I got the drill press and the shop vac. And it's actually about a five or $600 shop vac. So pretty good deal. I'll talk more about that later. Let me tell you a little bit about this guy in a few minutes. All right, guys, I had to get out of the paint room there for a few minutes. Uh, it's pretty dusty in there and it's hot. Uh, you know, wearing the respirator and the apron um, and standing there actually sanding is a little bit of like minor manual labor. So, you know, it's not uh, the easiest work, but it is, it is fun. I'm not, not complaining. But the, uh, uh, right now our air conditioner is broken in our house, uh, which is pretty bad timing uh, at the moment because I literally just quit my job uh, that I've worked at for 13 years. Um, last Friday was my last day there in, and uh, I had a corporate job before and uh, I got a couple plans of things that I wanna do. I'm not going back into the corporate world right now, but you know, this is a good time to, you know, I'm young enough that I might still be able to do something different with my life. And uh, I have a little bit of a savings uh, that I've worked hard over the years to try to maintain. And uh, we're gonna try to see if we can, one, make our cabin uh, viable as a business. And then the pool stick thing is kind of happening on its own. Uh, it's got its it's kind of its own thing. I like, I, you know, I never intended for it to be a business, but I do have people giving me jobs, um, you know, every, every week. Uh, it seems like I'm fixing maybe like four or five people's pool sticks, which isn't enough to sustain me. Um, just gives me a little bit of pocket money, I guess, in a way, but, uh, but it is nice to see that people are, um, learning that I'm actually doing pool stick repair and building a few cues. So that's been uh, kind of fun and interesting and exciting for me in this like new chapter, you know, of, of my life. I said, I've told everyone it's my retirement, um, but in reality, it's probably will be the first of many uh, retirements in my life um, where, uh, you know, I, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, following your passion and doing the things that make you happy and uh, for me, the corporate world um, just wasn't, uh, well, it didn't, didn't fulfill those needs that I had to be creative and to um, work with my hands. Uh, you know, any kind of creativity in the corporate world is frowned upon unless uh, it's your corporation. So I figured that uh, maybe I should just make my own corporation. So be on the lookout in the future for, uh, you know, who knows what I'll, where I'll end up, but uh, I think, um, you know, it's an exciting time for my life. So, so I'm taking a little break from the AC, uh, from the hot room and the sanding. I'm probably gonna go stand in front of a fan for a little bit and, and cool off. Uh, and then we'll get back in and we'll check. Uh, I wanna show you the new shop vac uh, that I got that's a dust collector as well, made by Fine. Uh, I believe it's a German tool and uh, just is a really an amazing uh, tool. My friends all give me a hard time about it because I show everybody my shop back, but you'll see once I turn it on, I'll, I'll give you a little demo. And then uh, we got a few more sanding levels to get to. I think I got all the finish off of the queue, and so literally it will just be 
Um, once the final sanding parts are done, uh, I'll chuck it up in the lathe a little bit differently um, using my slow turn motor. And then uh, I'll mix up some epoxy, put the epoxy on, s sand that down, and then, uh, and then we'll do maybe 10 or 15 coats of super glue on top of the epoxy and that cue's ready to go. So uh, be on the lookout for the cue coming up. I'll put the cue probably on my Facebook page, but it'll probably be marketed to, um, to the Nothing But Dufferins page on Facebook to try to uh, target those people that do like to collect uh, the Dufferins because it is a really nice cue. I think somebody will be really happy, uh, happy with it and uh, hopefully they'll like the way it looks and plays. Um, but I think it's gonna play really good with that 3 8 by 10 pin. I'm gonna try to keep the weight um, under 20 ounces as well. So I, hopefully it will have a nice, uh, nice balance on it. Um, but we'll see, we never know with uh, converting to Sneaky Pete. Could be a monster, could be a dud. Uh, my guess is that it's gonna play pretty well though. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll hit some balls with it uh, here in the next few days. So here's the new shop back. It's a 12 gallon canister with a fleece filter. Works really well. I think it sucks around 600 CFM. The thing's just a beast and it's super quiet compared to a normal shop back, which I love. So like I said before, there's always more sanding. Every time I come back in and look, uh, look away for a, for a moment, I come back in and I see something needs to be done. That might be my own uh, perfection uh, strive perf perfection that I that I have built into me that I can't actually not do, um, but you know I want to make sure the cue is is perfect or at least up to my standards before uh, you know I start on the next step here. So uh, that's what I'm doing. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. I'm gonna to call it. I'll try to be more proactive with these videos uh, coming up. I know I always say that, but hopefully I'll be able to uh, make some more. Uh, I'll have more time on my hands uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um, I am starting to do some more work out in the cabin, so I'll probably show you some of that stuff uh, as I go along. Um, but for now, uh, until we meet again, Hopefully this guy will be in his next stages of, uh, of playing ability. Take care. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.